Hi, I'm Rich Miller. At Virtua, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Wells Fargo, the New Jersey Education Association, United Water, making the planet sustainable is the best job on earth, Virtua, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, and by Adler Aphasia Center, helping stroke and brain injury survivors recover their speech. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Hi, this is Steve Adubato. The question is, what exactly are the keys to transitioning uh, from college to uh, a successful workplace situation? And even if you don't go to college, what are the keys to a young person finding gainful employment? Uh, we're going to be discussing that for this entire half hour. First guest we have is uh, Tammy Molinari. Uh, excuse me, Molinari. Molinari. I got that right. I sh I'm an Italian-American. I should have gotten that right the first time. Executive Director of the Bergen County Workforce Development Board. By the way, what is that board? The Workforce Development Board is a board of 40 community members, uh, primarily business members, um, including a cross-section of our community. So we have experts on literacy, disability, um, our community college partners, our education partners are part of this board. We're the best cross-section board of uh, any community. Why working with colleges? What is the connection there? Well, basically what we do is we figure out how to invest money in people who are unemployed and underemployed to get them back to work. And so our community college partners, our technical school partners are terrific places to go for education. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the fact that you were saying right before we got on the air that Employers are looking for certain skills and tools. They Describe are. them. Interestingly enough, soft skills are really one of the key things that employers are looking for. The ability to communicate, the ability to solve problems, um, to do strategic planning. These are all things that are global that businesses want. Take a step back. The ability to communicate, other, beyond being able to say people's names correctly, mm -hmm. and when you introduce them, which I screwed up, um, the reality is communication skills. I mean, I, as someone who thinks about communication a lot. I'm mm -hmm. stunned by people's inability to actually interview well, to engage in a conversation and be effective, mm -hmm. and frankly give a basic presentation. Are most employers looking for those skills? I think they are, and even a step farther than that. The basic communications are really a given, but communication in regards to me solving a problem with you, resolving a conflict with you, working uh, in a team with you, it, it really goes beyond the basic communication skills to things that actually help a company's bottom line. But how would you find that out? It's interesting. Tammy, if you're trying to employ someone, how would one find that out before one made a decision to hire someone or not? It's a really good question. And interestingly enough, the HR community a lot of times gets their candidates um, after they've um, been recycled through a uh, computer system that looks for keywords. And so they don't really have the opportunity to spend time one-on-one -on -one having conversations with people. It's a problem. You know, it, the other thing is that while we're, well, we've talked to our friends at Felicia in college, and mm -hmm. uh, one of the leaders of Felicia will be joining us a little bit later mm -hmm. on this uh, program. We, we, that's how we got into this whole subject of employing people at this age, whether they go to college or not. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about this is that you told our producers that we as parents should not be pushing our children to go to college if, in fact, that is not what they want. And I'm thinking, wait right. a minute, right. isn't that the way you get a job? So more importantly, the better question to ask your kid is, what do you love to do? If you could do anything when you get out of bed in the morning, what brings you joy? What do you have passion around? And what are you technically good at? I believe everyone's hardwired to do certain things really, really well. But and hold so, on, excuse me, Timmy, mm -hmm. at 17, 16, they know enough to make those decisions? Right, they don't. That's why our education system, my message is, we need to do a better job at helping kids to understand that before we say, this is the right college for you, or this is the right place that you need to go after you graduate from high school. 
we need to do a better job helping kids understand who they are and what they're fundamentally good at. Because the goal of education is to allow them to be self-sustainable, uh, employed individuals within our community. Um, education, formal education after high school is not right for every kid. You also told our producers that young people with disabilities face certain challenges that we have a responsibility to help them deal I, with. I did, yes. And interestingly enough, in Bergen County, we just, um, the, our county government just approved a $30,000 grant for us to bring in a program called Project Search, which is designed specifically. Project Surge. Project, Project Search, which is designed specifically to help kids with disabilities um, engage in an internship with a local business, preferred a hospital, where they really learn the skills and tools they need to be self-sufficient and to be employable. Um, this program's got a phenomenal success rate and we're really excited to try this out. I think programs like this are, are critical because we need to serve every kid. Every young person deserves the opportunity to know what they're good at and to figure out in our community how they can work and contribute. Last question before I let you out here, Tammy. Um, we ask a lot of people about leadership, so I'm gonna ask you this about leadership as it relates to employment. Right. I'm a big believer that we need more leaders and there clearly just aren't enough. Mm -hmm. can, do you believe we can see leadership traits in a person 17, 18 years of age and connect them to employment? I think you can see leadership skills in kindergarten. If you walk out to the playground, many times you can see the kid who's leading the team. You can see the kid who's a team player, who's supporting other people. You can see the child who may not be successful. It, it's really a dynamic when you put people together these kinds of things that come out. Now to build leaders, you need to build kids with confidence. Mm -hmm. And the best way to build a kid's confidence is to help show them what they're good at and how they can be successful. And that's our job. That's our job. Tammy Molinelli. Molinelli. Is the executive director of the Bergen County Workforce Development Board and uh, you help us kick off this program dealing with helping young people find mm -hmm. their way in the workforce. Uh, so all important. of our responsibilities. Thank you so much, Tammy. Yeah, my pleasure. Stay right there, we'll be right back right after this. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Ed Ogle is uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs at Felician College. Good to see you, Ed. Thank you, thanks for the invitation. Um, talk about the college's role in helping your students prepare to get out into the workforce. Students have a lot of choices. And uh, we can imagine how intimidating that might be for a young person, knowing that they're making very important decisions early on that will set, predispose them for their careers. And yet, uh, what ability or what means or what information do they have to make these important decisions? So part of our role is to make sure students are exposed to the variety of choices. And uh, more importantly, to help them see connections between these courses, these sets of courses leading to this degree, preparing them for this career. And um, what I like to, to remind students of is, a good education should provide, prepare you for a career, not just your first job, but for a lifelong career. What's the difference? Jobs change, <laughs> and people live and work for lengthy periods of time. And so we have to provide our students with skills so they can change as the jobs and the opportunities change, as they mature, as their interests change, as employers seek different skill sets. Uh, they can move with that and continue to uh, educate themselves and keep themselves relevant um, to the workforce. Let's break it down a little bit. The internships yes. are really big. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk to a young person who graduated from the college who, you know, talks about, you know, as we talk to uh, this Penny, this young woman who we'll talk to, she told our producers without those internships, she's convinced she would not have been able to get the jobs that she got. Is that typical? Internships are very, very valuable for our students for a number of reasons. Number one is it helps them connect the work with the learning that happens in the classroom. And secondly, exposes them to what they imagine a job might be like. 
So as an intern, uh, they'll have that direct experience uh, be, being assigned some responsibilities. But more importantly, they look around and they see what folks are doing with the careers they aspire to. Uh, for myself, I had the opportunity of a, a cooperative internship um, as a 17-year-old college freshman. And uh, it was very instrumental for me because it directed me away from work I thought I would be interested in. Away from? Yes. As well as provided me with uh, financial means to continue my schooling. But that insight was life-changing for me. Uh, I had a wonderful experience, enjoyed the people I work with, but I was able to determine I didn't see myself continuing in this line of work for the rest of my life. You know, it's interesting. You use the term career before, and then you use the term job. Mm -hmm. Are they really not the same? No. When we think of careers, it's, um, you know, we think of how we're going to expend our time, expend our energies. And to make a career of something, you know, to be attractive for us, um, it really has to be fulfilling. I can work at a job, but I may not be fulfilled. But back up. The pressure that so many young people feel, and others, but say particularly a younger person graduating from college, he or she is first feeling the pressure to get a job to start paying off their college loans. Yes. Is it good, if, if they're fortunate enough to get a job, someone, and they say, well, I don't really love my job, but I'm lucky to get a job, is should our response be, well, yeah, you got a job. If you like it, that's a bonus. Is that not the right attitude? No, the right attitude is, uh, you know, if we think of the time we'll spend in our jobs. <laughs> it's a lot of time. Is it gonna be drudgery? Or is it something I look forward to? I get up every day thinking I'm going to make a difference. This is meaningful work to me and to others. Um, you know, this latter is the direction we like people to move into. The, we talk about education. You, you mentioned have, getting a good education so I get a good job. Right. This is the utility of education. And that's a good thing. But that's not what matters most. What matters. What matters most is what an education does to us, not for us. And so for the long term, and, and this is, uh, really reflects um, uh, the, you know, our task at Felician College, is to infuse our students with, with these values that lead to a fulfilling career, uh, intrinsically and also for um, really doing what we can to make the world a better place by showing care, compassion, respect for others. And in this way, we work with our students through one of our core values is transformation. Um, it, it's a privilege to work, especially with young people, and predispose them for this transformational experience. And by transformation, I mean not changing into somebody different, but changing into our better selves. Is that overwhelming for some young people who are just saying, come on, I just want to find a job, and you're saying, hold on, time out. We're trying to help you be the best person you can be. People are hungry for this. They are hungry for it. Right. This is the draw. Th that's the draw. So they'll say, they say they want a job, but we really want more than that, don't we? Yes. That's important stuff. Uh, Ed Ogle is uh, the Vice President for Academic Affairs at Felician College. And uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, career is one thing, a job is another, but uh, we all need to be looking out for those young people. Stay with us, be right back after this. Thank you, Ed. That's good stuff. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Penny Kamkuakong is uh, an alumna of Felician College, and she has successfully transitioned from her academic life into a life in accounting. Is that fair to say? Yes. I've got to ask you something. When did you know that accounting would be something you'd pursue professionally? Um, I actually tried a different thing when I was in high school. And um, when I come to the US, I was deciding between whether medical degree or business degree. And um, I volunteered at a hospital, and I can't stand um, what it's like to be in a hospital. And I, when I walk in, 
I can't make that happen my everyday life, walking in and see people getting sick. I, I just want to be able to feel, feel something for them. So I decided to pursue my career in business. And at the time that I started my undergrad, um, it was accounting has changed a lot since mm. the war coming in Iran. And I wanted to become part of the change. So I decided to choose accounting as my major. That's great. Now, now you came from Thailand. Yes. It's only six years ago. Yes. And so talk about an amazing transition and successful transition. When you were at Felician mm -hmm. and you were studying accounting, mm -hmm. how much were you thinking about, I'll put, let me just put it this way, I have to get a job. I think pretty much every minute of my <laughs> life at that time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Pressure? Um, a lot. Where was it coming from? Um, because I feel like English is not my first language. So I feel a little bit of disadvantage, although a lot of people say differently. A lot of people said that the fact that I am experienced two different culture, I have a global perspective. But I still feel like when I want to express something, sometimes it doesn't come across. Therefore, I push myself to thrive f further than everyone else. I start networking before everyone else. What do you mean networking? Um, I went to the career fair since I was in sophomore year. So that at the goal at the time wasn't really to get a job, but for them to know me, know me for two years, so that when I'm a senior, if they have any opportunity, they can refer that opportunity to me. But back up, isn't it a fact that one of your professors suggested that you yes. start going to career fairs? Yeah, my advisor and my professor pushed all of us to go to the career fair. And, and you I, took it seriously? Yes. And you started meeting people? Yes. And so talk to me about the internships, because my understanding, and we'll talk about some of the keys to successfully uh, transitioning into the workforce, um, particularly if you're in an academic situation, a higher ed uh, situation. You, you had two internships. Yes. How important were those internships to actually getting job offers? Definitely, like, my number one thing. I think that's the, oh, almost the, the reason why they asked for an interview, that they see that I have had experience Were you before. at Deloitte? Um, I started um, private accounting first and part-time when I was in school because I can't do full-time. Unpaid? First job unpaid. Okay. And then after six months, then I have an offer for a paid position. And then after that, um, I went to PricewaterhouseCooper for the tax season. And now I am about to go to Deloitte for audit full time. So those internships, paid or otherwise, mm -hmm. were key to your successfully finding employment? Definitely. I, help everyone understand, what did you get out of those internships? Um, the internship really helped me not only utilize what I've learned in class to the actual real life, but I have an understanding of the accounting professions, how to conduct myself in the workplace, reply emails professionally, learn about cultures and values in the corporate world. And that's really what employees is looking for when I go at an interview. So that was key for you? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. What advice would you have to others watching, particularly people around your age who feel very nervous, mm -hmm and not as confident about the prospects of them finding a job. Yeah. So I think, um, first of all, you have to have the goal. And it doesn't matter whether it's too high or not. And work your way, try your absolute best to get it. It doesn't matter. You're going to fall. You're going to hurt. You're going to struggle. But at the end, I can promise you it's all worth it. Why do you say that? because I am in the process of becoming one. Before I let you go, when you came from Thailand six mm -hmm. years ago, was this the dream? Not that you'd be on public television, but <laughs> was this the dream you had professionally? Yes, I can say that 100%. How happy are you? Very. Well, we're happy for you. Thank and you. And I wish you nothing but success. Thank you so much. Okay, stay right there, Penny. Um, we will continue talking about some of the keys to successfully finding employment in this uh, very interesting and ever-changing workforce out there. Stay with us. Thank you, Penny. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. 
find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Jerry Crispin is the founder of Career Crossroads, which is <laughs> a platform for staffing leaders to talk to each other about their best practices. Okay, so we're talking about uh, finding employment in this very interesting and unpredictable marketplace. Large companies have um, are hiring enormous numbers of people when you aggregate that. They still are hiring, the group that I, I deal with is hiring over three million people worldwide. Who's hiring more than others? What kinds of companies are hiring more than others? Retail, obviously. Retail is one of the, the critical issues, obviously, in terms of growing right now. Um, um, IT, obviously, is growing in a, in a more, more uh, focused way. Skill sets, because we were talking earlier, um, and, and we we're talking about the idea that soft skills, yeah. communication, the ability to solve problems, work in teams, add to that. Well, skills. Communication is absolutely a critical issue, um, but it's the network connections that people have that essentially ensure that they get a job, ensure that they have the ability to uh, tap the knowledge base around them, not only within the company, but external to the company. So when we're talking about communication skills, we're really talking about the ability to have relationships at mm -hmm. varying levels and our ability to really understand how that's put together in terms of problem solving. But, go, but take a step back in terms of it, age that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Say we're talking about younger people in the 20 to 25 sure. year old bracket. How would they have these skills? They have extraordinary skills. They are teaching me. I have a 15 year old grandson who I said, uh, you know, I haven't seen you much on Facebook recently. And he goes, he goes, Facebook's old. He, says, <laughs> he said, you know, I said, where are you? He says, well, I've been trying Twitter. He says, I have I have a group of friends in the theater, and I have one Twitter handle for that. I have a group of friends in baseball. I have another Twitter handle for that. And then there's another group that I have. And he's engaging all of his friends and a growing number of them with a few different tweets, if you will, or text messages that he can send one to many, one to one. Um, and, and I'm learning from him how to, how to kind of organize your groups in a way that you can communicate with them more and more efficiently. But what, uh, he's he's going to be frightening when he gets out of, out of college. It sounds like it, but here's what I'm curious about. How does that connect to uh, a, a skill set that makes someone more employable? Oh, without a doubt. If I can bring in to your corporation the ability to tap dozens and dozens of people instantly to help me solve my problem, I am increasing my, my capabilities and my, my efficiency in the workplace to get things done. So to what degree do you feel that most employers are aware of the kind of changing skill sets that you just described? Most are clueless. <laughs> Ergo, Most the employers problem. are clueless. But <laughs> Most employers are clueless about the potential of what you just described. Right. But, it, but employers can't be, have to be people. So they're people at higher levels who may or may not have really um, played with some of the tools, technologies, and tried to apply them themselves. And what's happening within corporations is the corporations are being transformed, but not by the leaders. They're being transformed by the leadership of the people within the corporation itself. Make that more clear. I don't need to work within a team that's defined by you as the boss. I work in the team that I decide uh, can help me get my job done. And that may include some people within the company and some people without, outside of the company. You're helping me um, transition into this leadership question in, in a way that I didn't expect. Um, you just talked about leadership not coming from the top. Right. Where does leadership truly come from? from I think it comes from uh, kind of the aggregate of people who feel empowered and who are willing to take risks to get things done. Is it innate? Oh, I, I think that's, a, that's a more than a half hour question. But the reality is, I think you're born with it. I do. 
Um, I think that most people to survive are, are fundamentally uh, involved in a leadership kind of role and that uh, unfortunately in many of our society uh, societal kind of practices we, we kind of beat it out of people. <laughs> but you needed to be gainfully employed and be successful every day in what you do. Ab absolutely and those who those who recapture that despite what may be happening in the educational system on occasion um, I think fundamentally are, are succeeding and, and driving, I think, a new future for, for how corporations are, are going to form, how they will work together, um, and how they will succeed. Even defining what success is, is going to be a critical issue for many of the leaders in our corporations who view it in terms of purely uh, financial or economic means as opposed to how much they get things done. Jerry, you've given us a lot to think about. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. That's good stuff. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Wells Fargo, the New Jersey Education Association, United Water, Virtua, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Adler Aphasia Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.